Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the CABE webinar Wednesday for Wednesday, the 5th of January. I um, just want to start by saying I hope everyone had a lovely Christmas and New Year. Um, and hopefully 2022 will be um, slightly better than the last couple of years we've had. So this morning we will be going through the importance of wastewater treatment with Colm from Viltra. Um, so I know Colm has um, a lot of experience, but I unfortunately seem to have left my script in the main office. So that is not going to help me this morning. So if Colm would like to get started, I think I will just hand over to him. Thank you very much, Jordan. Um, and just to, just to emphasize what Jordan said, Happy New Year to everyone. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully 2022 is, uh, is, is better than 2021 and the previous 2020. Um, as Jordan says, my name is Colin Gribben and I'm from a company, Viltra. Uh, and basically we, we design and install wastewater treatment systems for both the domestic and commercial sectors right throughout the UK and, and Ireland. Um, the webinar this morning, um, I'll just give a bit of a, a, bit of a brief on, on our company um, and then speak about conservation, why is it important? We go through some options on effluent treatment tertiary treatment and dispersal. I'll show a few options for mains drainage, and then we'll, we'll focus on service and maintenance, and then we'll just hit on a couple of projects that we've done, and then any questions that anyone has, there, feel free to contact me. Um, <clears throat> we're a company, we're based in Northern Ireland. Uh, we've, got, we've got a branch in England. We've got, uh, we've got an office in Scotland, and we've also got agents in Wales as well. And being based in, in Northern Ireland, we cover, cover the whole of the island of Ireland as well. These are just some of the accreditations that we have and some of the people that we work with. Uh, the top left, you'll see the National Trust. We are responsible for all the National Trust's work here in Northern Ireland. Uh, it's our job to keep them compliant at all times and be on call 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Uh, for any, any downtime they have or any issues they have with any of the wastewater treatment systems. Um, okay, who are we? What do we do? As I said, we've provided an all-encompassing service that covers every stage in the wastewater treatment process, um, right through from consultancy and design. So if you're buying a site, if you're looking at a site, if you have a problem with the site, we can come out. We, can, we have a, a team of uh, environmental engineers who can come out and do a, uh, a consultation with you, have a look at it. Um, we can install our system, so as well as um, designing and building our own sewage treatment plants, we also have our own civils team where we will actually come out and install and commission the whole system for you. And we've just completed a large job for RSPB up in Scotland where we've, where we've done uh, a large system for them up at Lock Garden. We therefore we also provide ongoing service and maintenance um, to the systems, which is every bit which is every bit as important as everything else, because uh, we can all argue about whose system's the best or what works better, but unless they're serviced and maintained, but then there's absolutely no point in putting them in at all. Uh, we do a lot of consultation with um, the service industry or the hospitality industry, sorry, should I say, on grease management and how they can manage grease from their site. And then we also service commercial, industrial, and agricultural markets as well. Here are just a few, a few slides, a few shots from, from jobs that we've completed. Sort of give a broad specter of what we do. Top left would be a screen that we have in an industrial site. Uh, top middle photograph shows the activated sludge process on a meat processing factory. Uh, on the left-hand side in the photograph, you'll see the raw influent. In the middle jar, you'll see the activated sludge. And then in the jar on the right-hand side, you actually see the effluent, which is being discharged from the system. Um, bottom, bottom middle picture is of an adoptable pumping station. Uh, so you've got your wash water kiosk, you've got your main control panel kiosk, and then the two, the, the two manhole covers are over the top of the pumping station and valve chamber as well. So conservation, so why do we do it? Well, we do it to, why is it important, I suppose? It's important because we need to conserve, we need to protect the natural environment. Um, 
right along Ireland and the whole of the UK, we've got some beautiful natural resources along the coast, inland waterways, lakes, ponds. And it's very important that we preserve these and we make sure that we don't pollute them. And that at any interaction we have as humans, as people, as householders, as business owners, that we're not just cleaning up our own house and dumping it into, into, the, into our water courses and, and forgetting about it. So it's important. Um, some photographs. <clears throat> now, these are all photographs that I've taken myself. Um, so we're free to share them and the jobs that we've been on. Uh, and it sort of highlights why it's important. This one, a poorly designed, a poorly designed uh, soak away coming from a, a, a standard septic tank. So in the background, if you look closely, you'll see the neck of the septic tank. Uh, and then to the forefront of the photograph, you can see the outlet chamber, which discharges into the soak away. And what's become quite obvious from this photograph is the soak away has either not been installed or, or simply just not working. You can see the rushes around it. Ground was very poor. Builder just put the tank in, put it out into a sump hole full of stones. And then that's the result of it, just ponds in the ground and sits at the back of someone's garden and sort of out of sight and out of mind. Um, this is one that we took at the back of a restaurant, which was latched on to the family home, typical of what you'd see in the countryside right throughout the UK and Ireland. Um, environment agency came out and informed them that he had a problem with the septic tank. Uh, he was adamant that he didn't. He says, no, I've never had a problem. He says, it's functioning fine. I haven't, I haven't even had to empty it, he says, in about 10 to 15 years. So they took him down to the field at the bottom where the water course was going, and they, they showed him the water course. And they said, OK, you might have emptied it. You might not have had a blockage. But this is the result of the discharge coming from your system into the river, the water course at the bottom of his field. So again, out of sight, out of mind, in his opinion, he never had a problem because he never had a blockage and the restaurant and the house kept functioning. But unfortunately, the impact he was having on the environment, would, as what you'll see, is quite severe. And a lot of that, as you'll see from the photograph, was through grease. So grease wasn't properly managed both in-house, no grease trap on site, and it was just simply running through the septic tank and discharging straight into the water course at, at the bottom of this field. Um, another one that we took ourselves, this was one where there was a small bakery running uh, alongside a small housing development, both discharging into uh, a sewage treatment plant and discharging, in, uh, which was eventually discharging into a water course uh, one or two fields away towards the back of the development. Again, as you'll see, no problem on site. As far as they were concerned, everything was, everything was fine, but this was the result. Uh, of it not been treated properly, not been managed properly, and just pollute, polluting the environment behind. But again, out of sight, out of mind. Another job for a domestic, for a domestic household, and this one sort of highlights a, lo a, lot, of, a lot of problems that you have with, with domestic systems. So, two-fold story here. There was two houses built beside each other. Uh, one mirrored the other, so you'll see the you'll see the, the house that's in the background is the house that was to the left of the development. There's a, a a mirror image of another house just to the right of it, and they both shared a sewage treatment plant and a septic tank. Uh, the guy on the left uh, went to sell his septic tank. Building surveyor came out and looked, saw what he saw in the front garden. Uh, there was no permit. There was no permission for the tank, and ultimately the house then couldn't be sold. Uh, the whole lot ended in high courts, and there had to be an easement sought from the farmer next door to get discharged into a water course on his land. It's a bit of an extreme case, but the whole case ended up costing a quarter of a million pounds to sort out. Um, but what sort of amazed me about this one was, if you look closely at the bottom of the photograph, um, the, the, the septic or the treatment plants there, but we picked up, I think it was 120 kids footballs from the discharge that was coming uh, from the tank. So basically the tank was there, it wasn't functioning and it was discharging just more or less into the cesspit. And they, their idea was, okay, rather than fix it, we'll put a fence around it so that nobody can get into it. And every time the kid, kids kicked the football over the fence, they just went and bought them a new football. And I think we pulled out about 120 kids' footballs from the bottom of the garden. Um, 
So again, out of sight and out of mind, uh, and actually ended up having to go to the high courts to be settled um, as they needed a, an easement from the, the, the neighbour next door. Um, so as I say, very important. And that's the resulting factor. So that's, that's, that's uh, we actually had to go out and replace both septic tanks. Or, uh, we had to replace the septic tank that was serving both houses and put individual ones in for each house uh, before the house uh, that you see in the photograph could actually be sold. So we're touching domestic sewage treatment. Um, when should you look at it? You should look at it when you're thinking of making a planning application. So if you're going out and looking at a field which maybe has potential for a site or maybe had outline planning permission uh, or you're thinking of purchasing it, well, everybody will think, well, should it face the house to the south, to the east, to the west? Uh, do we go for a bungalow? Will we be allowed a two-story house? Will we be allowed a dormer house? And people rarely um, think of the impact of not having a proper sewage solution on site. It tends to be that you know, the, the house is located and then the tank is just put somewhere where it can be put on a plan. Uh, so it's a very important that whenever you're looking to buy a site or you're thinking of getting planning permission, that it's actually taken as a consideration as well. And it's actually brought into part of the design, because if not, it can become a problem for further down the line. Uh, if you're selling your house, it's important to make sure that the, the tank that's serving your house is, is working properly, uh, functioning properly, up to date desludging and maintenance records, um, so that whenever it comes to the sale, that you have everything in order and that there's no comeback um, and it doesn't hold up the sale of the house. We've been acting in cases where the septic tank isn't functioning, uh, hasn't been emptied, it hasn't maybe third party access onto somebody's land for a, a, a soak away or a drainage feed. And then all of a sudden, um, the purchaser is looking to maybe subtract 10, 15, 20, 30,000 pounds off the price of the house to rectify the situation. So very important um, if, you're, if you're selling a house that you make sure that, you're, that everything's in order and that all the proper permits are in place and that you've got your proper up-to-date maintenance records and desludging records for the system. And from the purchaser's point of view, it's very important that you actually look for these and make sure that they are in place because it could become a problem further down the line if there's something happens to be wrong with it. Um, if your house or business is not connected to the main sewer, your sewage will go to one of the following. Uh, a septic tank. Septic tank is an underground tank where the solid sinks to the bottom and the liquid flows out and soaks through the ground. Sewage treatment plant, also known as a package treatment plant or a part mechanical system that treats the liquid so it's clean enough to go into a river or a stream. So a septic tank relies on a tank plus uh, a soak away through the ground. Uh, if you haven't got enough area within the site for a soak away or the ground's very poor drainage or you're beside uh, a, 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 a water course or a stream or a protected area, well then that's when you would have to put in a sewage treatment plant. Um, another option is a cesspool, which is also called a cesspit. And essentially that's just a sea tank that there's no outlets on and it collects the sewage and needs emptied when full. Um, it really would be the, the last resort as you're continually emptying it. Uh, and obviously the larger you make the tank, the, the, the greater the intervals between emptying, but the more effluent you're taking away. So that would, have, in, in a lot of cases, have an cesspool to deal with sewage coming from a house is essentially adding another mortgage onto the house as it'll need that, it'll need it emptied that, that often and cost that much. Uh, so it's really, it's really the last resort um, as opposed to having a septic tank or sewage treatment plant where at least you can discharge effluent either to be treated in a soak away or treated effluent into, into a water course. The homeowner, homeowners are responsible for their choice uh, installation and maintenance of the wastewater system under a new code of practice which was introduced by the Environment Agency back in 2015. They have a legal responsibility to minimise the impact of their sewage waste if within the bounds of the property, for example, with a septic tank or a sewage treatment plant. 
And that's what's referred to, and that's what was introduced in 2015 by the EPA as the binding rules in England. Homeowners of septic tanks that discharge directly into ditches, streams, canals, rivers, surface water, drains, or any other type of water course will need to replace or upgrade their drainage when they sell their property or as soon as possible. So basically back in 2015, the EPA introduced what they called their binding rules. And this was the outcome of it. And anybody who had a septic tank that discharged into a ditch or a stream or a water course had to either replace it using a sewage treatment plant with full BSEN 12566 part three certification, or the discharge to the water course was stopped and diverted to a drainage field designed and constructed to the current British standards, BS 6297 2007. And essentially what that means is what I'd said in the last slide, um, if, your, if your system wasn't up to date, if it wasn't functioning properly, well then under these binding rules that were released in 2015, you had to upgrade it. So if it was going into a water course from a standard septic tank, that wasn't allowed. You had to take that septic tank out and replace it with either a sewage treatment plant, which would treat the effluent before it was discharged into the water course, or a septic tank and discharge into a drainage field or a soakaway or, or some other form of tertiary treatment. I've provided a link at the top of the slide um, and that will take you through to the, you, uh, the guidance for the general, general binding rules and essentially they're summarised in, in these three charts. Um, it's a good source of reference for England and as well as having um, the binding rules for England, it will also provide a link for Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland as well. But a general rule of thumb would be right throughout the UK and Ireland, you cannot discharge from a septic tank into a water course. It's as simple as that. Um, you either have to treat it in a drainage field or a soak away or some form of tertiary treatment, or you put in a sewage treatment, install a sewage treatment plant, and you can then discharge into a, a water course with, with, with the proper permissions. In Southern Ireland, I've provided a link for their code of practice. Rules differ slightly there, where you're just simply not allowed to discharge into a water course at all from a domestic from a domestic wastewater treatment plant. Everything has to be dealt with through the ground. So this code of practice was released last year, and as well as explaining all the rules and regulations and the do's and the don'ts of what you can and can't do for a population equivalence of less than 10, um, it also is a great source of reference for different treatment systems, dispersal methods, percolation tests. So uh, while it's been unique to Southern Ireland in, in the rules and regulations, it's, it's actually a very good source of reference to explain how drainage fields, how sewage treatment plants and septic tanks work. Some examples of domestic wastewater treatment plants. Um, Activated sludge, where you have free flowing bacteria which form within, within, the, uh, within, within the wastewater treatment plant. Basically, you have a primary settlement. Uh, heavy solids are settled in the primary settlement, travel into the aeration zone. You've got uh, a, a small air pump which pumps air through diffusers. It promotes bacteria. Bacteria is free flowing within the water. That's what treats the water as it comes through the system, then flows into the clarifier and from there is discharged in, into a suitable water course or stream. MBBR uses small media, free flow media within the system, where again, primary settlement um, settles out the heavier solids, travels from then into the uh, treatment zone where you have very small media. Uh, aeration, again, small air blower, pumps air in through or blows air in through a small diffuser. Uh, and as you add the oxygen to the sewage, promotes bacteria, the bacteria attaches to the media. And as the effluent flows through, uh, the, the bacteria that's attached to the media does the treatment. RBCs, um, again, primary settlement, um, biological zone and the clarifier. Only this time we do it with discs. Um, and as the discs rotate within the water, they collect the, they collect the bacteria or the bugs within the water, they attach themselves to the discs. As they come back up into the air again, uh, by rotating within the water, 
the bacteria grows, and again, that's what treats that's what treats the uh, influent as it comes through the system. And then the last one, submerged through the filter, the SAF system, same process, biolog our primary settlement, biological, and final clarifier. Only this time we have a larger fixed media where again we blow air through the diffuser, grows bacteria on the fixed media, forms a film, and as the effluent moves through the tank and treats and then flows out into the drainage field or into the water course then afterwards. I referred to EN12566.3, and basically this was a certification process that um, all small domestic wastewater treatment plants up to 50 PE equivalent are treated, are tested to. And essentially they were sent to the test institute, which was usually in Europe, Germany, Holland, I think there was one or two maybe in France as well, where the units were sent, were, were sent over there, they were installed, and then live influent was, was, was discharged into the system and they were tested for a period of maybe nine, 10 months. And after that, um, the average results were taken and displayed on, on, on a certificate. And the certificate should give the daily load that it'll treat, uh, both organically uh, and hydraulically. And um, along the right-hand side of the certificate, you'll see the efficiency of the system. So it'll say over the period of 38 weeks that it was tested, it'll give you the percentage removal for your BOD, ammonia, and suspended solids. Um, in Southern Ireland, uh, there was a building control regulation brought in a couple of years ago as well, where it also had to be SR66 compliant, which essentially meant it had to be CE certified, CE certified and desludged no more than once under testing uh, at the test institution. It's important to remember as well that these certificates are only, only based on domestic effluent. So on combined effluent from maybe a commercial premises or a restaurant, okay, the certificate proves that the technology works, but it is purely based on domestic effluent being discharged into the into the tank doesn't take into account um, anything, anything other than domestic. And then I'm not just a, a photograph of a domestic sewage treatment plant being installed in the ground. This one was being installed in an area where there was a very high water table. So on the photograph on the left hand side, you see the unit with the anti flotation um, bars in, at the bottom. Um, middle photograph shows the shutter around the tank where the concrete then had to be poured in around it. And then the final photograph shows the manhole cover and the, uh, the inlet manhole, outlet manhole and the two are vents on the system. Uh, ventilation, very important on, on any sewage treatment plant. Um, so the, you have an inlet chamber and an outlet chamber, which are usually referred to as inspection chambers. And what therefore is if you have a blockage uh, or you need to inspect the influent coming into the tank or the effluent leaving it, that you can open the lid, uh, inspect it, check it, or if need be, if there's a blockage, be able to roll it through the inlet or back up through the outlet, outlet. The ventilation at either end allows the tank to breathe and prevents any smells traveling back up into the, into the domestic property. Tertiary treatment. So what happens if you haven't got a water course. What happens if you just if you can't discharge into a stream? Are uh, that options just not available? Um, why why would that not be available? Well, this is a slide just showing good soil. If you're discharging into a percolation area, uh, or if you want to discharge into the percolation area, it's imperative that the soil is good, that the ground conditions are good. Um, one of the slides that I showed earlier, where it was just basically ponding around the top of the tank highlights an example of where the ground just simply wasn't fit to cope with the water. So if you think about it, if you're in a domestic application, you're usually discharging somewhere between 900 litres and 1,000 litres per day uh, into, into the, the septic tank. Rule of thumb, British water flows and loads would say that every person in a household uses approximately 150 litres per day. That's to washing, meals, showers, and just general toilet usage. And for a household maybe with six people, that would equate then up to 900 litres per day. So the principle is, if you're putting 900 litres in at one end, whether well, there's 900 litres then coming out at the other end. 
And no matter how clean it is um, or how dirty it is, you still have to disperse that water some way. And it's imperative that your ground conditions are, are good. You need good drainage qualities. So if you've got ground with good drainage qualities, well then it's possible to discharge from the standard septic tank into a soakaway because the ground will percolate away to 900 litres. If on the other hand, you're discharging into poor soil, bad soil, where it's waterlogged, or you've a lot of rushes, and then it sort of stands to reason that it can't actually go anywhere, and then you end up with a pond situation, or a field, or a lawn, or a garden, which just comes heavily saturated with uh, effluent coming from the septic tank. And there is a perception, um, if you're not actually within the industry, that if you put in a sewage treatment plant, that you don't need a soak away, that, that you know, it, it treats the effluent it, it, and it can just magically disappear. Uh, again, I have to say, if you think about it, if you put 900 litres in, well, that 900 litres comes out the far end, whether it's treated or whether it's not treated, whether it's clean or whether it needs secondary treatment, you still have a volume of water coming out the far end of the tank that you need to deal with. Uh, therefore, soil conditions, percolation tests, are imperative, vitally important to make sure that you get the drainage field correct. These can be done, this can be done doing percolation tests. And essentially what you're doing here, uh, and within the mountain rules and within the, the local EPA sites, you'll see guidance on how to carry out percolation tests. But as a rule of thumb, um, to summarize, what you're doing is you are basically digging the soil down to a depth of about 300 mil below the outlet of your pipe, which is usually about 900 mil below ground, and you're testing the soil, you're testing the ground to check how good the drainage qualities are. So you're putting water into a hole and you're seeing how long it can, can take to drain. And depending on how long it will take to drain will depend on the area that you need to discharge that 900 litres of, of, of water per day. Uh, ideal, so ideal scenario, brilliant, you get away with a standard septic tank, but a lot of the times if the ground is sat heavily saturated or there's a high water table, or indeed maybe you just simply don't have enough room, that's whenever you would have to discharge, you would have to install a sewage treatment plant and discharge the water course. There are other, other methods, so if you're restricted in an area, um, you haven't got enough room or the water table it tends to be particular, particularly high. There are other, other options out there. And again, the EPA book that I shared earlier on will give you a good, a good help and guidance as to what options are out there. Some of them have just highlighted a mound, um, a mound filter system, sand polishing filter, or an intermittent soil polishing filter. And these will all depend on how good or bad the percolation tests are. Uh, within the ground that you're testing. Another option that has become available on the market recently um, is a drip dispersal system. Um, basically, what, what that does, uh, you, you mow plow it into the top of the soil, so you're only, you're only discharging it roughly at about 150 to 200 mil below the, below the ground level, and you're discharging, you're drip, dripping it through, through the ground as, a, as opposed to a standard soak away. Um, and that's a photograph taken from one that was, was done at a nursing home. And if you look very closely at it, you'd see that it's very evenly distributed over the whole of the ground, installed at about 150 mil below. So you're getting the advantage of trans evaporation and you're also keeping it higher in the ground to give it a greater chance of traveling down through the soil. And what it ensures is 100% even distribution over the whole area. Commercial food. Commercial and agri and food processing industries, I'm just touching this. Um, again, they need effluent treatment. Uh, a lot of the times, or most of the times, they need a pre-treatment, which would be a, a, a screen, either a belt screen, as of on this slide, or a, a rotary screen, where you're screening off the higher, the, the, the heavier solids uh, before you discharge out in, into the main sewers. Um, depending on, on what way the main sewers are, if they're capacity or if they're not capacity, they may need you to actually treat the effluent further. So as well as pre-screening the effluent, you would have to offer some form of chemical treatment to take out maybe CODs, BODs, or suspended solids. And that can be through a chemical treatment unit, 
or what a lot of people would see uh, or recognize as a, a DAF unit, dissolved or a flotation. So basically you're screening out the heavier solids at maybe up to three, six mil. Uh, then you're, chemi you're, you're adding chemicals into the water, which will bind uh, the, the, the soluble um, fats or, or the smaller solids that are in the water. And then you're screening them or you're taking them out through the DAF unit or a, or a chemical treatment unit. And then sometimes if they're if they're discharging into uh, a water course, they actually need further biological treatment as well. And in some cases where maybe the, the town or the city's sewage works or capacity, they will require you to actually have biological treatment on site as well, too. And again, it's the same as the smaller, the smaller domestic wastewater treatment systems. It's the same process as used activated sludge. Um, RBCs or submerged rated filter, obviously just on a, on, a, on a lot larger scale. Sometimes they can be located above ground. The, the one on the left was where there was a particularly high water table and the ground just simply couldn't be dug into. So the tanks were pumped or located above the ground. And then the other just shows an example of one from an industrial, an industrial uh, application where the, tanks, where the tanks are below the ground. Again, school. Uh, this is this was a job for a school where they had an issue with parking along the road when parents were dropping the kids off for school in the morning and collecting them again in the evening. So what they had to do was create a one-way system uh, through the school uh, so the parents could come in, drop their kids off, and and drive out through the other gate so it was safe for the kids to get dropped in. One of the issues they had was that the the septic tank was, was located right in the area that they were looking to develop. Um, so a sewage treatment plant had to be designed that could be flushed with the ground and not interrupt the parking spaces that were within the school, uh, which would still allow the one-way one -way system for the kids being dropped off and picked up. And as well as that protected the environment and protected the water course to which the, the, the sewage works were discharging into. Mains drainage options. Um, for larger systems, uh, I'll just touch on this. So uh, I think I showed a slide earlier on. And this is the same uh, top left-hand photograph. Uh, shows the, the same site. So basically, you've got a pumping station. So if the housing development or, or indeed maybe a single house um, is discharging into the main sewers, uh, but the levels are too low, well then you install a pumping station, pump up into up into the main sewers. Housing development, same principle, but obviously on a lot, on a, on a lot bigger scale. And then this would be an adoptable sewage treatment plant for a housing development. So if there's a sewage, if there's a development permitted in the countryside or in a more rural and a more rural application where there's no access to the main sewers, well then there can be systems designed to treat it to an adoptable standard where the water authority will come in and adopt it, subject to it being approved and, and working properly. Service and maintenance. So as I say. All these sewage treatment plants are great, and every manufacturer will say that theirs is the best, and probably rightly so in each rate. But there's none of them, there's none of them that will perform without any service and maintenance. Um, and some of the slides that I showed you earlier was the result of systems not been maintained properly, not been designed properly, not been looked at, out of sight, out of mind, forget about them, install them. Um, and unless they're serviced and maintained, there's absolutely no point in putting them in at all. So there's no point in having that initial investment in, in a system. Um, the reason being to protect the environment and make sure that you don't pollute and then forget about it. Uh, and as I say, I always say, you know, you go to look at a new house or you go to look at it and people will show you the patio, the, the, the sunroom, the conservatory, the kitchen. I've rarely went to the house, I've never went to the house where they'll, where they'll take you into the back garden and say, God, come down here and have a look at the, the sewage treatment plant that I have. But it is vitally important and people need to be aware of it. And again, some, some photographs were taken by our own engineers and this is the result of sewage treatment plants not being, not being looked after or maintained properly. So photograph on the left, um, I think if you look closely, there was like a toy duck or something put down one of the systems and ended up tangling in one of the mixers within the sewage treatment plant. Um, the photograph on the right was from an air blower um, that had been 
buried in the ground instead of been left sitting on top of the ground uh, and haven't been looked at in years. And the, the slime that you'll see there is a result of all the toxic gases that have built up inside it. Um, photograph on the left was a tank that we were called out to because it was uh, sudden um, for foam. And what we found was that the rugby tops were being washed three to four times a week within the domestic house. It was just simply overloaded with, uh, it was just overloaded with detergents. Uh, middle photograph, which everybody can relate to, not a nice photograph to be shown around this time of the morning, I understand, but wipes, face wipes, baby wipes. And yes, it may say on the, on this, on the packet when you buy them, you know, flushable, um, yes, they may be flushable. Yes, they may not stick within the U bend of the toilet or whatever within the house. But this is a result of what happens when you put them down into the sewage system. So, vitally important that these are not put into are not put into the sewage tanks at all. The other one, the, the photograph on the right, uh, again a system that was installed, um, and the husband and wife actually opened a small bakery from their own house, so they were operating a, a home bakery service. Um, again, just totally overloaded with flour, grease, and everything that you have coming from a bakery. Um, and again, just wasn't functioning and wasn't working uh, and, and just discharging out into the environment. Um, and it's important to say that you can operate these home, home, uh, home work bases. You can, you can have a small bakery or a restaurant, whatever, but so long as the sewage system is designed to cope with that. No domestic sewage system can 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 cope with 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 um, too much detergents or too much grease or fats coming through it. And then back to again my favourite photograph of the of the restaurant that was connected onto the house. And then the, the photograph on the right hand side was a reed bed. So somebody put, uh, someone had installed a septic tank and a reed bed. Uh, the reed bed was being used as a form of tertiary treatment before it was just charged into a water course, which is absolutely fine and, and works well if you look after it. The solution to this one was put a fence around it, forget about it, will not look at it. And we only got the phone call whenever the, uh, the toilets started backing up and uh, the manholes were totally clogged in the back. So again, uh, maintenance, uh, you know, uh, it's important that... Um, inspection chambers are, by their definition, inspection chambers. Should check them regularly, sludging, regular inspection to make sure there's no problems. And then I'll just finish by by showing a, a, one or two projects that we've we've done ourselves and the challenges and limitations. This is Fanned Lighthouse, which is in the northerly point of the island of Ireland, um, where they had. Um, converted the, 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 the actual lighthouse uh, for self catering accommodation. Uh, and the sewage treatment works had to be actually built, a wall, a retaining wall put on the cliff and the tank located within that retaining wall uh, and a tertiary sand polishing filter system built to cope with the effluent coming from it. They opened a business, a business, uh, a visitor center down the road. Um, and again, same principle, sewage treatment plant and tertiary treatment system uh, before it was discharged into the ground. And then an example of, a, of, of an industrial application. So you had pre-screening, pre um, balanced tank, and then DAF unit to do your, your final chemical and uh, removal at the end of it. This one was one where a domestic sewage treatment plant had been installed at uh, an egg processing plant. Um, and the problem with it was that it was a domestic plant installed on an industrial site and it never worked. Um, and rather than rather than, than totally remove the old system was there that was there, what we designed was a, a, a four-stage system that would go in and sit alongside it and treat the effluent before it went out into the drainage field. That finishes my presentation. Um, I hope somebody's got something out of it. Um, if there's any questions, please let me know. Don't be afraid uh, to, to contact me. Um, more than willing to answer the phone and answer any questions or queries uh, that, that you may have. And thanks. Thanks for listening. Thank you.
Thank you, Calm. That was great. <clears throat> um, so bear with me two seconds. Can you see the uh, Q&A button at the bottom of your screen? Yes. So if you click on that, that's where any questions will appear. Um, might just be easier if you're able to see them yourself. Yeah, so Jonathan Williams, yeah, thanks for the presentation, Colin, very informative and the approved inspector and see domestic sewage treatment plants installed. Is there a commissioning certificate provided following the installation? Uh, well, the answer to that, Jonathan, is yes. Um, there, there is and there should be. Um, so every system that's installed, manufacturer uh, should come out and provide a commissioning certificate. So we did one in Buxton um, just before Christmas. Uh, and the building control inspector come out and ask for a commission certificate and we're sending that off to them now, now this week. So yes, every sewage system, sewage system that's installed should, should come with a commissioning certificate because believe it or not, we've seen systems that have been delivered um, where they're either not put in level, they could be in, in back to front connected the wrong way. So it's very important that they go out with the full installation instructions um and get a commission certificate to say that's an installed property. Uh, yes, it is possible. Uh, I can I can send through a couple uh, a copy of the presentation to um to Jordan and we will we, we, we and, and she can then forward on the slides. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, just to answer you. Yes, the percolation test ev uh, evidence. Um, the percolation test, whenever we would be supplying a system, we would be asking them um, where their percolation tests are done. So that would be done prior to the, the tank being installed, if you like. Um, so uh, yeah, yes, it can be done. So as part of, a, as part of the full installation process, um, if they are putting it in, we would ask them to show photographs of the drainage feed that was installed, and then that would be combined with whatever percolation test results they would have. Uh, choice of in this order one septic tank, so it's treatment plant three septic. Uh, Michael, yes, it would be. I, I think if you go to any um, environment agency, be it, in, be it in Ireland or the UK, they will always say, uh, and this seems strange coming from a, a sewage treatment plant manufacturer, that a septic tank is always their preferred, a septic tank and soak away would always be their preferred option, simply because of the protection that it would offer. So their view on it would be, well, if it's, if it's, if it's a septic tank, there's very little maintenance to be done to that, apart from actually desludging it, therefore the likelihood of polluting the environment would be would, would be minimised. Um, sewage treatment plant and cesspit, yes, in, in that order, in my experience, in 19 years of working within this business, um, we've never ever installed a cesspit on a permanent basis. We have installed one at one stage simply to get a housing development off the ground and to allow the first two or three houses to be sold on the development. But after that, then it was taken out and a proper sewage treatment plant put in. Um, Ireland, does Ireland have a higher standard in sewage treatment taking account in the latest standard changes? In my opinion, yes, they would have. Uh, in my opinion, um, it, both north, north and the south of Ireland would, would have a higher standard. In, in the north of Ireland, they will allow you to discharge into a water course, but it has to be of a certain uh, standard before they allow you to do that. And they will insist that you give them the certificate, you, you produce the certificate and that you install the tank as per the certificate as well. In Southern Ireland, um, it's, it's it extremely, extremely um, high standards as well, where the whole percolation test, the whole site assessment has to be done prior to the planning application. And then it's regulated right through the whole installation process and has to be signed off by an engineer at the end. Um, Damien, the seven metres away from a habitable dwelling um, is twofold. So number one, yes, it's for found, foundation reasons. Number two, it's also for smells and nuisance. 
So um, it's to ensure that the, the, the proper the proper space, or the proper distance is away from the house so that there's no nuisance from, from, from smells. Or if you have a sewage treatment plant in and you may have an RBC or you may have a SAF system where maybe there's a blower running on it. So it's not providing any noise issues or whatever around the house either. That's not to say that any of them are particularly noisy. It's just a rule that for, for a public nuisance or for a nuisance for the householder that they're seven metres away. Uh, Richard, I would be extremely, extremely concerned about uh, secondary discharge and into water courses in the, in, the, in the UK. Again, we're a sewage treatment plant manufacturer and, um, and we, des we design systems and there's a lot of other sewage treatment plant manufacturers in the market as well. And if they're all CE certified, well then they're usually all okay. The problem is when they're not maintained. And this is where the big problem is both uh, in the UK and in Southern Ireland. In Southern Ireland, you've got the benefit that they're not discharging directly into the water course, but of course then they're discharging into, uh, into the ground or the groundwater, or sometimes maybe beside a borehole or a drinking water supply. Um, but I, I, I would be concerned, not from the point of view of the systems that are being installed, because that's pretty much regulated in Northern Ireland. In England, it's a bit looser to be fair, uh, in Northern Ireland, you do have to supply the certificate and you, and you have to install the system that you've said you're installing. Uh, in England, it's a bit more loose. So I'd be extremely concerned uh, in, in England. Um, Scotland is, 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 is pretty stern as well too. SEPA have a good handle on it and will make sure that you put in the system that, that you've said you put in and the pro process to get it is pretty rigorous. Um, Wales as well, LRW, pretty strict in what they do. But to be fair, England seem to be a little more lax and sort of leave it up to yourself. Um, and, and on trust basis, which in my opinion, um, can be dangerous at times. Uh, Paul, the guidance on percolation test procedures is within the uh, government website. Um, if you send me your, if you send me an email, I, I can send you through through a link, a link to it. Gavin, estimated lifespans of the sewage treatment system. Oh, I mean, depending on where you buy them or what type you get. Um, usually, the um, HDPE, the rotationally mold, or even the concrete systems, will have a life expectancy of in excess of 20, 25 years. Now, obviously, the mechanical parts, the less mechanical parts that you have in them, the better, um, because they're usually what will go wrong. Um, so any motor, any, any drive, any, any uh, air pump or blower um, will usually come with a one or a standard two year warranty. And then after that, it's up to it's up to how well it's maintained and just how long it will last after that. Um, but usually, uh, usually in excess of 20, 25 years, you would expect to get from them. But again, I have to stress, has it been installed as per the manufacturer's guidelines? Um, and if it has, you should, you, you, I would say minimum, minimum 15, 20 years. Again, yes, people will offer warranties 25, 30, 40 years, but read the small print. Um, but but there's usually usually a, a, a long way from Stephen, yes, they are. I can again if, if you send me an email or I'm not sure what way we interact after this, maybe Jordan's got your details. I, I can send you the, the rules for, for Scotland as well. But in the in the in the link that I provided for the binding rules, if you click into it, there's a link further down the page, which will take you through to the, 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 the Scotland rules as well. And so, yes, we do install, Daisy, we do install sand, or install sand polishing filters for domestic systems and, and commercial. And um, what do we use generally? Again, depending on the region, uh, in Southern Ireland, they're used all the time, or, or most of the times. In Northern Ireland, the tent, it, it tends to be going straight through to the watercourse. Um, 
uh, we're doing one in Wales at the minute where we're going to have to install a, a polishing filter simply because of the sensitivity on the water course that the, the, the developments beside and NRW have insisted on it. Uh, in Scotland, there's a lot of uh, polishing filters um, for, 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 for domestic systems. Yes, Donna, again, I can give you um, a standard. I, I can send you to a template or I can send you to an example of, of what our commissioning certificate is. Uh, and that'll give you a, a guide to what it should be. But usually, um, whenever we send our engineers out, we, we would have maybe a 40 point checklist. And we check everything from the inlet vents or the inlet and outlet chambers. We check the distance from the house, the distance from the water course. We check the operation of the system. We check the ventilation on the house as well. So we check the soil stacks, make sure that the right heights. Uh, now, obviously, we can't amend them, but what we will do then is we put an informant at the, at the bottom if we see anything that could come back um, to be wrong or could potentially cause a problem in the future. If there's anything major, we'll advise it to be changed, and only when they're changed will we issue the commissioning certificate. Um, and yes, the, the standard form, I, I can send that through if you, if you send me an email. Is the septic tank not cheaper? That's the reason for installing. Yes, definitely. Yeah, septic tank is is a lot cheaper. But if if the if the if the regulations are strict and if if, if it's policed properly, um, it won't become the cheaper option because you just can't be in, can't install it. But yes, if you're if you're self regulating yourself, of course the septic tanks is the cheap is the cheaper option, and that would be the reason for installing it. However, in saying that, if you install a septic tank properly and you install the percolation area properly, um, you will find that it's not a lot cheaper than any of the other systems. So a proper septic tank and a proper drainage field uh, sometimes can be near the same price as putting in a sewage treatment plant as well. When you put in a sewage treatment plant, you can reduce the, the size of the drainage field by maybe ending up to 20 or 25 percent. Uh, Paul, as I said, on the commission certificate, um, the, the certificate will basically, when, whenever we do them, whenever we send out a commission certificate, we'll also send out the checklist as well. Um, so we, as I said earlier, we, we take note of everything. Um, uh, we'll even take into account the, the, the topography of the house and we'll actually take photographs. So if there ever is a problem, we can refer back to what we saw on the day. Um, some people look at a commissioning as going out lifting the lid, looking in the tank and saying, yep, that's operating properly. Um, that's not the right attitude though. You, 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 have to, you have to check a lot of other stuff as well too. Can you use soak away crates for the outfall from a set treatment plant? Um, I've seen them being used, Simon. Um, my opinion is a soak away through the ground is better um, because a soak away, it does two things. Number one, it polishes off the effluent and, and gives it that bit more treatment before it hits the water table. Therefore, to treat it going down to a drainage field or treat it naturally going down to the soil um, would, would, would be better. But again, that's my opinion. And I do see soakage crates being used for them. Um, we've never used them um, for, for, for a sewage treatment plant. Otherwise, in saying that, um, I, I, we sell some systems across to France as well, and I know that in some scenarios they're using them over there. The, how do you protect the drip drainage field? It can be used use for anything. Anything. Um, yeah, we've 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 had a drip drainage field uh, under a, a football field um, uh, at at. Uh, four or five schools so the area has been used for for, for a football field for school um, it can be used for grazing in a field for maybe sheep um, you wouldn't maybe be putting horses or, or, or cattle in on top of it just for simply because of the poaching but yes um, it can be used as a lawn as a garden um, and, and we have used it um, it has been installed uh, under under football uh, pitches for, for children at schools um, so, and I can give examples of that when shown. So, yeah, that's typically what it can be can be used for.
Thanks, Damien. Yeah. Um, I'll send you to a template for that. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, Gavin, on one of the slides that I showed there, um, I'll actually go back to it. Uh, on this one, Greenfield Foods, um, the water quality that we're actually getting from it, um, you'll see some of the results on, on the right hand side. Uh, I just can't see it with the boilers up there. So we're getting ammonia 0.1, uh, BOD 2.8, um, and our suspended solids are at four. And they have actually asked us now to come back and look at it to see is there any way we can reuse that. We've also done a couple of designs for systems up in the Scotland where they're going out into, say, a lock which has been used for water sports for 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 an outdoor pursuit centre or whatever. And where, it, where SEPA have insisted that it's taken down to bathing water quality. Um, and bathing water quality is essentially more or less drinking water quality. Um, and we've, done, we, we've designed systems where, you know, you have different stages of, of UV treatment and all afterwards. So the answer is yes, obviously the costs will go up um, and, and it would be on a case by case basis. But yes, it, 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 can, be, it can be done. If you're asking me the question, could it be done on a typical one that's installed without that being a design consideration? Well, no. Um, but yes, it can be it can be designed to do that. Uh, option one, Michael, goes to soakaway. Option two can either go to a soakaway or a water course. So option one be a septic tank going to soakaway. Option one will always go to a soakaway. Um, option two can either go to a soakaway or a water course. Um, option two is usually the option that goes to the water course, though, because the because the septic tank uh, or the ground's not suitable for discharge um, to to, uh, to subsurface ir irrigation. The only time, or not the only time, sorry, a lot of the times we would see a sewage treatment plant going to soakaway is maybe where the drainage qualities are actually too good. So we've done maybe some where they've been close to the sea or they've been close to the beach where it's just pure sand and the percolation tests have been done. And as quick as you can pour the water into the hole, it's draining away. Um, and as, uh, so therefore, uh, option two being the sewage treatment plant where you're required to treat the effluent before you actually discharge it to the soakaway because it's simply just going to run through the sand that quick to the water table and not get any further form of polishing. So option one, always a soakway, option two, soakway or a water course. Again, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. In Southern Ireland, you can't go to a water course. It has to go to a polishing filter or a soakway or some form of tertiary treatment. Okay, Colm, I think you have made it to the end of all of the questions. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hope, Jordan, that I, I just answered them as, as a solemn, so I didn't type the answers in, so hopefully that's okay for everyone. As I said, please just email me, ring me, lift the phone. Uh, we, we, we're doing, we do, we do um, key presentations throughout the year, and hopefully this year now we'll get back to doing a few with yourselves. So just... Give me a shout, uh, give me a ring or, or drop me an email and I'll, I'll, I'm more than willing to speak to anyone. That's great. Thank you so much, Calm, And thank you for everyone who's joined us this morning as well. Um, I will just wrap up quickly so then everyone can get back to trying to get back into working mode after the break. 
Um, so just want to thank you all for joining and thank Colm for presenting this morning. There's been a lot of great feedback coming in, so I'll definitely share that with you. Um, just want to say, um, hopefully see you online next month. Um, I believe the title for that is New Build Housing Defects, and that is on the 2nd of February. Um, so if you haven't already seen it, please go and take a look on the website. Um, I will try and get this up on YouTube as soon as possible. Um, in the meantime, if anyone has any other questions or comments, please do just email. Um, you can email me directly or you can email the webinars at email address and I will pick that up as soon as I can. Um, so again, thank you to everyone for joining this morning. Hopefully you found it beneficial and informative. Um, and if anyone has any comments, please do get in touch. Thank you. Thanks very much.